everybody to another stroke analysis with me, Coach Micah. Today we're looking at a surf. This is Bob. He sent me some footage. If you want your own stroke analysis, go to the link in the description. You can order your own stroke analysis at any one time. You get it back within 72 hours so that you're ready to hop on the court and work on some of the things that we will see. So let's get started with Bob. And I have Dominic team here on the right as a comparison. Now, word of caution, whenever I put a pro player next to you, I will say if I put myself here in comparison to one of today's top players, I would never in a million years look like that. But what I want to do with that is that we have an ideal form that I think everybody is able to achieve within their range. And so that you have a more specific and more um, detailed vision of what ideally you want to work on and what you want to work towards. Are you going to look like Dominic Team? Am I going to look like Ash Barty? No, probably not. Because we're not out there practicing 10 hours a day. They have different athletic abilities. But again, this is something that we want to work towards. So let's get started with Bob. And I want to show you... Uh, two or three serves here in slow-mo and point out one of the things that happens to a lot of rec players. So you see that here, Bob is falling out to his left. Ideally, we want the energy to go forward and we would like for people to land in the court or at least move forward. Are you going to jump into the court? Are you going to lift off like dominant team? Again, probably not. But we definitely don't want our energy to fall off here to the side. Let's look at a few more on those serves. And we do see that this here is happening. So what I mean by that is that you see a very large angle here and the energy of Bob's body clearly goes out to the left. If we look at Dominic team here, the energy goes up and out. So I'm starting with the contact point because that is what most of the time players are looking at. We're looking at like, oh, I'm making contact too low, too far to the right, to the left. However, that is just a consequence of the things that we do before. So we will look at what is happening here and then we will work our way backwards. I want to take that approach today. So what we're seeing here is the ideal angle here. You do not want your arm directly across your shoulder here because that would put a lot of strain on your shoulder. So you do want an angle here, but you certainly don't want as much of an angle as uh, Bob has. The second thing that you're seeing, and this is very, 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 very common with rec players, is that both of Bob's hips and both of his shoulders are facing towards the court. Whereas we see with Dominic here, he is not completely turned open. He is still somewhat sideways. Uh, this is Fabio Fonini over there. If we were to look from his perspective, we would see more uh, the left side of Dominic's body. Whereas if I'm having an opponent over here, he sees Bob full on frontal. So that is one of the things that we want to avoid because it does not allow for the ideal transfer of energy. So let's go back to the very beginning where we can put the first step in the foundation right here. If we go back to... Dominic here in his ready position, you do see that his left foot is almost here. The tip of his left foot is behind the heel of his right and you're almost parallel here, Bob. So the first thing is put this right foot a little further back because that allows you immediately to be a little bit more side on. Uh, two things that I'm seeing that obviously, if we let that run, that are very different is how you take your racket up. So you have an abbreviated motion to put the racket into or get into the loading position. 
theoretically, I don't have an issue with that because if we do look at, for instance, on Andy Roddick, um, he had that shorter take up. I actually had that shorter take up when I came back from shoulder uh, surgery. So I'm not sure if what the reason is uh, for your take up, but as long as you get in the proper loading position, I don't care. And that is the proper loading position right here. And you get in it reasonably well. So what that means is in the proper loading position, we have shoulder over shoulder and hip over hip. And we see here already again that you're having your right hip way further open than Dominic. Dominic's left or right hip is looking to us and his left shoulder is here in front of his right. The right shoulder is looking down and back. So how you get there, again, I don't care. The second thing that I'm seeing, there is a little play in your hand when you're gripping the racket. You do have the proper grip, it seems like. You do release the ball at the right height. You release it between uh, the top of your head and your chin. But then there's a little re-gripping going on. You see that here, that your hand or your fingers are away from the grip. Now, I've heard coaches point that out to students to do that if they want to maintain a loose grip. However, I would prefer that you do that maybe here, that you're just loosening your hand a little bit and not when you're really here in your loading position. So moving on from the loading position, to my mind, this looks pretty good up to this point. And then let's look at what Dominic is doing next. So we see here that the load came from his back leg at the beginning of your loading position, about here to here, 60% of your energy, of your weight should be on your back foot to really create that up and out motion. And the up and out motion, the contact, the going after that ball is the reaction. The action that we have to have is the loading down and back. So imagine somebody is pulling on your pocket there. You want to feel a down and back tug so that you can then explode up and out. And that's not really happening here. So dipping into here and imagining that you want to jump off that outside leg will help with the energy transfer a little bit more. And working deliberately on keeping the chest and the hip, the belly button, everything facing this way. Because you're then coming up into what's called the lock-in position, meaning the butt cap here faces to the ball, the tip of the racket points down, the inside of the elbow and the inside of the wrist all look up. And that is something that rec players, and I'm including myself in that, and I will explain why in a second, oftentimes do not get into. Is the furthest you're coming or the closest towards a lock-in position, right here. And you do see that the tip of the racket never really comes all the way down. The inside of that elbow looks more towards here. And that is very common again for rec players because we may not have the flexibility. This takes a lot of flexibility in your thoracic spine. So again, ideally we would like to have this pointing down and the tip of the racket up so that the entire energy goes up and out towards your contact point. Boom, and this is a flat serve here. You do see that Dominic is leading with the edge of the racket. Then once he makes contact, he hits it full on right there. And you also do a good job here leading with the edge of the racket. I really like that, so that's well done. And there is some pronation of your forearm 
and an internal rotation of your shoulder. And we're seeing how well Dominic Thiem does that by having the side with which he's hitting the ball actually facing to the outside. So he's got getting his forearm pronation there and the internal shoulder rotation, the long axis rotation complete there. And you're not quite getting into that. The reason for that could be that you are not flexible enough. Shoulder is not flexible enough. I had shoulder issues. I certainly know about that. The way that you want to work on that is not to work on it when you're making contact here and then really working on the pronation after because by that time that's already done the rotation is already done where you want to focus on that again is that this is a reaction and the action happens here so coming further down here and turning the thumb that is hidden right here more towards this way allows you then when you're coming up to turn that thumb around this way and that allows for this motion so we see that here it's very much coiled his thumb is pointing towards his shoulder blades here and then the turn comes here up and out and the next step that you're seeing here, as he's following through, he lets his shoulder just roll and the right arm tucks across the belly button and then the right hand basically does not quite touch the left um, pocket, but it comes all the way around. Whereas for you, it would look almost easier if you fall through to your right, which is of course not what we want to do. So make sure that you continue that fall through all the way across your belly button and to the left. So to recap, we want the foot further back. We want the turn here of the right hip to be down and back. So you're really pushing into the ground, down into the ground and your energy goes up and forward because that will then allow you to come into the court, basically lift into the direction that you're sending the ball and prevent you from uh, falling out to your left. One other thing that I'm seeing is, I'm assuming you really kind of rushed through some of the shots here because you wanted to give me um, enough footage. When you're going out and you practice your serves, take your time in between serves. So really visualize what you want to do, what the things are that you're focusing on, and then get into your serve motion. Um, if you are, for instance, when you're playing matches or points, does not necessarily have to be league or anything, doesn't, anytime you play points, if you are bouncing the ball, for instance, do it in practice, right? So that part of your routine, you also want to include into um, your rhythm here when you're just practicing. So give me some feedback if you um, had some time to work on these things and let me know what the results are. Because I think when we're fixing the stance here, the dipping and the shoulder and trying to really stay in sideways from here on out to your contact point that you'll find with, of course, the uh, requisite number of repetition that it becomes easier to repeat the proper motion because that is how your body naturally will move if you allow it to.